It was really the nature of the metal that drew me because I could work that in so many different ways. It had the precision that I used to enjoy and to me it's wonderful the way these things come together in a life. As I do these things, I start with a framework or a sketch map or somebody's whispered directions in my ear and uh, then I'm off to find this place that I'm, quote, looking for, the place that I'm going to. And there's a great, great deal of dialogue and I can keep that dialogue outside of words. It's all physical, it's all form. It's about how the form works in space. There's no motor or anything, so you have to go up and touch it. That's another interaction, and that's something that's really vital to me in this work. To be able to pull time in in such an intimate way, and then of course, if you leave them sitting outside the material, I use mild steel rusts, it takes a while, but it can go for years changing color back and forth. So all these ways of reaching out to accept what's coming in. It's that feeling of flow that, you know, it's simply all moving. I'm not pushing anything, nothing's pushing me. And that's a very calm place. I just love that feeling. And that is the, the one that I'd like to find. Most of the time I can't put it literally. And uh, when, I'm, when I'm working, I try to get, get out of the way so that this can, this can, f can flow through, through me, you know, through, through these hands, these eyes. Uh, and uh, it's a joy. Even when things aren't going very well, you know, I don't get frustrated or mad at it anymore. I just um, try to get out of the way and let that come, whatever that is. I'm a resident of Hornby Island. I have been since 1988 when I walked into the forest here with the chainsaw and started building my home. I guess I consider myself, if we have to put a label on it, an artist, one who is working in visible media and attempting to communicate and find connection with the natural world and the larger world of humankind, which is in quite a state today. The specific work that I'm doing now, which is an endless series called Unity Maze, and each work is just a piece of that Unity Maze. It came from a, a vision that I had when I was uh, sitting one morning. This practice as an artist came from another practice which is the meditation practice that I follow. And for me is a collection of the best ways to be working from quite a diverse background. When I asked the I Ching, I got hexagram number 56, which is now tattooed on my arm, the wanderer. And not all who wander are lost. And somehow that just condensed the feeling that I've always had of being a wanderer. Connection, relation with other human beings has in the past been very difficult for me. And that's the nature of wanderer, the unconscious nature. But what I discover is I am a wanderer. I do move and I, it's not by my, all by my choice. I'm not in, in an ego sense in control, but in a deep sense is in the unity of the world. So you know, my personal path to this goes through a number of different changes and, and discoveries and realizations and dead ends and all those other things. And uh, this is the, the adventure that has brought me to this place. And it's not an adventure of a person in an external world, though I've done 
a lot of that, but it's an adventure of the world within itself. I feel great affinity with the, uh, the, the teachings uh, of the native people here. And uh, it's because of that profound connection with the natural world, which I have always felt. I walk in the forest, I go around, and there's a way in which I'm greeting the trees. Well, give them 10, 15, 20 years, and it's like, oh, you're back. You know, as I walk through the, the forest here. Many of them seem to recognize a presence and acknowledge that presence as a human being living on a decadal time scale with beings that are living on centuries time scale. I see how they live with the fact that the wind comes through and branches break off and I'm always fascinated in the forest going out after a storm or walking past old places where a giant tree has fallen just very neatly and perfectly between two other trees, younger trees, clearing the light for them and not taking them out at the same time. I know our culture says, oh, wait, there's no consciousness there. But this begins to feel like consciousness. There's something there that I can encapsulate without destroying in a sculpture. And that's one of the reasons I don't put names on them. Because if I put a name on that beautiful spot in the forest, well, then that's what everybody will think that they should see. But if it's open, the way it was for me, then that's what I want to communicate. If I'm going to listen to a tree, I need to be quiet. The first part about listening really is that silence, that being open. But then there's something else that goes with attention, like that silence is not a vacuum. There's something that's being created there, and it's being created by and around a number of things that we can separate with our you know, very good human minds. Into trees, stones, me, you, and if we're listening to each other, it's a very different experience than if we're not. I found that being open to that larger silence brings more intensity and more beauty to the connections that I am aware of and experiencing as a human being. If I am not listening, if I am have a, 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 an imposition, as a confinement of that of that moment, that space, that silence. What I see in the end is not satisfying to me and it's not very satisfying to anybody else. It's not about imposition of anything, it's about intuition and intuition needs a quiet place to, to reveal itself. I've discovered the richness and the joy of listening. And to come to that place, I have to be quiet. It's simply a fact. Nature inspires me in my work and in my person. It just delights me when people walk up to a sculpture and look at them for a while, and then they, they point to something in the center, or sometimes it's out on the edge, and say, say something like, it's all happening right there. 
And it's like, okay, this is, this is what this is about. There's a feeling of, uh, of, of personal uh, happiness, but there's a de much deeper feeling of joy where there's an absolute rightness and uniqueness and that opening of freedom into the world. It's reaching into that place where we're all free. And when this opportunity comes for all these different things to interact with each other, it's uh, something that I'm simply obsessed with. And I, I wish I could uh, spend more hours here, but uh, body just needs, needs some sleep once in a while. <laughs> The way that it expresses and connects so much of what we do, that's what art does. It's an essential part of human culture and at its root, it's one of the deep nonverbal ways, one of the ceremonial ways that we connect. Underneath that is this deep need to communicate. I think that's probably just a fact of being human. Community is important for the simple reason that we're human beings. We've kept the sense of small community and lots of people who come here, come here because they find that here. I used to be able to picture myself doing things and not having it move out into the world. Well, now it's started to go that way. And that's very rewarding because I know this is connection and it's why I, the only place I sell this is here on the island at the market or somebody who comes here because that is a personal connection that ends up being important there's a coming together and it's a good feeling to know that somebody has found a joy in this and that contributes a certain sense of meaning to my life just doing the sculpture is another aspect of that of that sense of meaning, that it's a discovery of meaning. I have a sense that I'm bringing something into the world that needs to be brought in. That makes me feel good. Another reason why I have to make art is to continue the adventure. I don't see any other way that I could have ended up doing what I'm doing now, which for the first time in my life is really communicating with other people and opening up connections. And that's a way of bringing something positive into all of our lives. It's more open.